Hi, my name is Stella Blen, and I have the honor of introducing my dear friend, Kate Prilliman. But first, a story. This past Saturday, after I was done taking the ACT at CBHS, I was standing outside alone in the rain, trying to figure out how to get to the car without damaging my fuzzy Ugg slippers. But amid my panic, I saw my knight in shining armor, Kate, about to walk out. I scream, Kate, hi, you're here, and she greets me with her usual smile and a laugh, wondering why I'm yelling her name. I explain the situation to her, and she tells me that everything is going to be okay. Kate's words of affirmation made me realize what had to be done. I needed to ditch the Uggs and walk in the rain in my socks. <laughs> but being the supportive person that Kate is, she held my belongings while I took off my shoes and gave me an encouraging, you got this, as I began my journey onwards. She didn't have to stay back and help me through that instance, but she did. This just goes to show how kind Kate is, even when she doesn't need to be. When Kate isn't off doing kind things for others, she can be seen with her nose in a novel or rocking it on stage or in chamber choir. Anyone who's had a conversation with her about literature knows how much of a passionate and joyful individual she is, and I'm so lucky to be able to call her my friend. She is an incredible writer, and I know that what she has to say will be nothing short of phenomenal. So, without further ado, I present to you, Kate Prilliman. Sorry about the clicking. Um, I was in sixth grade the first time I heard Chamber sing. All of chapel, 450 people stuffed in pews and along aisles, sat silently as we waited for the service to begin. Until a group of voices rose up from the back balcony, a symphony of church Latin and tight harmonies, cutting through the thick silence. For two short minutes, I sat on the edge of my seat listening until they finished and we were left only with a faint echo of music as the chapel fell silent again. Flash forward to the first day of rehearsal freshman year. I sat down in an empty chair in the choir room, ready to sing my heart out like I never before. Instead, I was given music and promptly made my way to the next class. As a newbie, all the songs we sang to me were new, but to my peers, the upperclassmen, these songs were more than memorized. They knew them by heart. Evie and Kate and Ella and Boom Boom had performed these songs, sung them so many times that their voices fit together immediately like puzzle pieces. I spent weeks scrambling for the notes, leaning into the girls around me, scared that they would notice and embarrassed when they did. I relished my time getting to hear their voices. I was sitting in Eucharist Chapel every day, but I couldn't deny the days I left rehearsal frustrated and embarrassed positive that I would never make it, that my spot with them was a mistake. I can remember the day it all, made to make, uh, all began to make sense. The morning before had been an exceptionally bad rehearsal, and Mrs. Millen told us to go home and sleep. You'll know it in the morning. I left class thinking that was stupid. Maybe it would work for some, but I was so far behind, nothing could help me now. The next day as we sang, I waited for the moment, that phrase I missed every time we practice. I stood there dreading the page turn, the little dot on the paper. Nevertheless, we shot forward. But then, finally, I felt myself sing the right note, a natural in a sea of flats. I could feel the harmony and feel it resolve a moment later. These days, chamber might be the class I'm most comfortable in. I know our set list so well, I think some songs like Jigs might haunt me for the rest of my life. But freshman year chamber wasn't the only time that icky feeling of not belonging crept its way into my life. It had been there long before, and I suspect it will stay far into the future. Even the first time I met my best friend, it was there lingering. The first night at Victory Ranch, while I lay in the bunk above her, and she lay on the bunk below, clutching my ratty stuffed animal, she told me how hard she had pushed herself to get into St. Mary's and how she still didn't think she would make it. I was stunned. Even from knowing her maybe two days, I was positive she was the smartest person I knew and definitely smarter than I. I tried to imagine what it was like for her, this genius, to worry, about, to worry that she wouldn't be accepted to a school where she so wholly belonged. What had she pictured when she imagined my school, I wondered. Who was the perfect example? Who was the organized, kind, smart, confident, perfect St. Mary's girl to her? 
This question followed me back from Victory Ranch and lingered long after we made it back to Memphis. We spent the next week scrambling to keep up with the new upper school schedule and attempting to effectively squeeze 63 15 year olds into the small freshman commons. One day my friend turned to me during a busy transition period. You have everything together, she said, and I so don't. As she ran to her next class, an unfamiliar little selfish feeling settled over me. Was I the perfect St. Mary's girl to her? Me, with a tangly, unbrushed hair, who held on for dear life just to get through simple math, who went home from school every day and took a nap instead of doing homework, and was felt just as afraid for the next four long years ahead of us. If anyone was really the perfect St. Mary's girl, it had to be her or someone else, someone who did sports or something, Whoever she was, I was sure she wasn't me. That night I went to my dad, stunned by my odd revelation, laughing about how my new friend could actually believe that I was the perfect St. Mary's girl. Well, why aren't you, he asked. I've been here 15 years. I've been in these halls during in-service and tornado warnings. I have seen traditions withstand the test of time and new traditions begin. I have stood in nearly every corner and crevice of our small campus. So what stops me from being the perfect St. Mary's girl? What stops any of us from being the perfect St. Mary's girl? I don't know when or how, but eventually I learned the exact definition for that icky, crushing feeling that made me feel lost and chamber and made me believe I didn't belong among my peers. It's called imposter syndrome. I'm telling you this because when Miss Ray sat us down and told us to tell a story, to impart whatever wisdom I have learned in my advanced age of 17, I thought of something I wished someone had told me so much sooner. It doesn't matter if you've been here your whole life or just three weeks, you belong here. Even if at times you feel like an imposter. Whatever you believe in, God's plan or the way of the universe or just plain old luck, I promise you no one will discover that you don't belong here because you do. I hope that you take your time today and in the coming weeks notice when you maybe feel like an imposter. And I hope you think of this speech and know none of it is true. Thank you.